So now I'm going to talk about how to do some basic macroeconomic data transformations. I use this in my course, Macroeconomic Data Analysis, which is basically, you know, undergraduate level or, you know, basic business knowledge. I'm taking some data that you could get from a, you know, a standard database and tie it together with some theory from, from an undergraduate level class and then talk about how to uh, use some basic mathematical operations to get some usable um, data series. All right, so um, what I'm going to talk about right now is is just real basic stuff. And so uh, share of GDP, you know, for example, for macroeconomics, you can take, um, we're going to use imports and exports. Um, rather than taking the nominal value, which is going to be in current dollars, you're going to have to transform it into something that's uh, comparable across time or across countries. And so share of GDP is the first. Uh, macroeconomics, we talk about real values, so we're going to adjust for prices. Um, and then another ratio is going to be one price level over another price level, and you can compare you know, some items changing in price more than another. Next concept is logs and exponents. So we're going to take natural logarithms. Um, in economics, we never use log 10. This is going to be base E. And then the exponent is actually the opposite of a log. It's the, the, uh, uh, it's the exact same operation in reverse. All right, so we're going to actually take a variable, make an exponent, and then also take a log of it. And then percent changes, which are uh, pretty basic, but it's going to be something that comes up quite a bit in macroeconomics. And I have an Excel file um, as well, but I'm going to do most of my stuff in R. Okay, so um, right now, uh, first we'll start with the share of GDP, which is basically any variable divided by GDP. That gives you a percentage of total. So, for example, consumption is in dollars in the U.S., um, and so is GDP, but consumption is something like 70% of GDP. And you can compare it across countries. So if China has a lower consumption percentage, um, you don't need to know the dollar value. You don't have to convert currencies. You just simply compare two percentages. What I'm going to talk about here is export share, exports over GDP, import share is the same, trade balance, or X minus M, and then a variable that I use quite a bit, trade openness. So there's a couple ways to do it, but I, right now I'm going to say exports plus imports over GDP. Basically, the more exposed you are to trade, you'll have higher levels of one or the other. All right. Next thing to talk about is real variables and inflation. Again, it's a common macroeconomic topic. Real variables, for example, the real wage is nominal divided by the price level. Right, um, real interest rates because they're in percentages. You per, you actually subtract percentages. I'm not going to do that here, but right now you can say nominal interest rate minus the inflation rate, right? and then percentage changes. So the one we're going to talk mostly about is inflation, which is the percentage change in CPI. But any variable x will have. Uh, it's a couple ways to do it. Sometimes I'll do it subtracting and then dividing by the original value. But when I use uh, software, um, it's actually a little easier to do it this way. You take it as a ratio. Um, the current value divided by the previous value, so time t divided by t minus 1, so this is 1 in the past, minus 1. Now, algebraically, you could say t minus t minus 1, and then take that divided by t minus 1. That's the same algebraically. Um, but again, that, would, that actually has three variables. This is only two, so it's a little bit quicker. All right, so that's for any variable. It could be a percent, a percent exchange rate appreciation, could be growth and consumption, could be whatever. Uh, the pi is inflation, and so that's just percent changes in the CPI, right? One thing I'm going to do here um, is going to compare monthly changes versus annual. So you could take month-to-month -month inflation, um, but if you have 12 months in a year, you could actually take each period minus 12 months in the past. What that gets you to do is compare this January over last January, and then um, for variables like GDP or industrial production that are highly seasonal, um, you wind up having no seasonal effects. Okay, so I'll compare a one-month lag over a 12-month lag. All right. Um, like I mentioned, you can do a price ratio, and this is not going to really be inflation, but uh, one thing I'm going to show you is that you can actually get a, a variable that has no units. You can simply say that one variable is rising faster than the other. It's kind of like subtracting inflation rates. Basically, if they're equal, the ratio is 1, but if one is higher than the other, the, the ratio will grow. So 1.1 would mean that the top variable is 10% higher than the bottom variable. Uh, you can do with exports over imports, for example. You don't have to convert currencies. You don't have to convert um, you know, dollars. It's simply a ratio uh, that, that has no units, but it allows you to show a relationship between the two. All right now, getting into logarithms, uh, I call it the opposite of exponents. Basically, if you take the exponent, you get exponential growth. First of all, if you take the log of the exponent, you get x. Right. So basically, the log undoes the exponent. It basically flattens exponential growth into more or less a straight line. Like I mentioned, economists use natural logs. We never use base ten. 
Um, if, if you're using software that, that asks for the command for log, you might have to make sure that it is not log base 10. So the default, like an R, um, is, is natural. You'd actually have to use log 10 to get base 10, right? So log 10 comes up in natural sciences and stuff, never comes up in macro. All right, and so here's my graph of x versus ln x, right? So this looks pretty exponential. I generated this, and then um, taking the log flattens it. So economists can, can actually log data take the log of a variable um, and gets this grow this this high growth rate over time okay and so if, if you have if you talk about integrated variables you might have i1 to become i0 right or something like that so what we do here with logs is um, important for macro and finance is that the log change if you take the log of a variable and the difference it's pretty much equivalent to the percent change in X, right? So, so basically, log changes are percentage changes, right? So you take log changes in stock prices or something that's essentially a percentage change in stock prices, right? Now, as I was saying before, logs flatten variables. Um, this, the way I look at it is logs reduce the power of operations, okay? So the highest level is the power, right? Next level lower is multiplication. Multiplication is one step higher. Um, addition is the lowest. The way I think of it is... Um, 2 plus 3 is 5, um, but 2 times 3 is 6, all right? Um, and then one higher up is 2 to the third power, which is 8, all right? So powers do more than multiplication. Multiplications do more than addition. But what logs do is it reduces powers to multiplication, and it reduces multiplication to addition, all right? Now, those are the standard log rules. I'm not going to go over them here, but one thing I talk about in class is this is the, the quantity theory of money or the equation of exchange. Money supply times the velocity equals the price level times GDP. You can take logs of both sides, and the log of MV is the same as the log of M plus the log of V. So it actually splits up the multiplication into addition. All right, And then what happens when you take the log changes that turns these into percentage changes? All right, So because velocity doesn't change, this is zero, but basically this would say that money supply is transferred to inflation, log change in prices, and growth, log change in GDP. So I talk about that in macro class as well as when I do this in the classroom. So here we're going to talk about inflation as the log change of CPI. Um, I'm going to talk about the standard percentage change and the log change and look at the correlation. And again, I've got all this in an Excel file um, on my website, but I'm, I never really graph in Excel, and I spend a lot of time in my class uh, trying to make it look okay. R does it a lot easier. Plus, if you're going into economics and statistics, you're going to want to use R. So I'm going to move over to R with my... Um, uh, variables here. Um, I've got my database um, already loaded on my website, and then I'm going to work through these equations here. So, um, what I'm going to start out with without downloading any data is I'm going to make a variable that goes from 1 to 15. So it's just x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up. I'm going to take the exponent and I'm going to also take the log. So now I've got exponent of x and log of x. All right, you can see here the log. Log 1 is 0, and the log 2 is 0.693. Um, interestingly enough, if you ever talk about the rule of 72 in finance class, this is where it comes from. Um, it's a little bit higher because interest isn't continuously compounding, but it, you might talk about the rule of 69. It comes from the fact that to double, right, it has to do with the log of 2, or if you're going to make something two times as much, it has to do with the log of 2 being about 69, right? A little bit slower compounding, you get 72, and that's where that comes from. But you notice that... Uh, uh, x is higher than the log of x, and it's growing faster, so L and x is flatter. And then, of course, these numbers are growing much quicker up here, okay? So we can plot that. Here's exponent of x, all right? I'm going to add the dashed line here. Basically, it appears flat even though it's slowly rising. Exponential growth is much faster than linear growth, okay? So L, um, x is going to be flatter, all right? Now, if we plot... Um, x as well as ln x, we're going to see it's flatter here too. So this is linear growth, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this is log x. And so again, exponents are the steepest, the regular linear is in the middle, and then the log is the flattest. So that's the opposite procedure. You go from super steep to super flat through logs. Right? That's just one way to think about it. Now, what I'm going to do from here, having talked about logs, is we're going to uh, talk, uh, first we're going to pull the data set, then we're going to do some real um, and uh, shares of GDP, and then we're going to do inflation rates using logs as well as percentage changes. So I pull the data from my website. It's already in the file here. One thing is always look at the head of the data. This is actually two types of data that are uh, 
side by side. They don't quite line up. This starts in 1947. This starts in 1993. I took these from the FRED database, um, and I had, you know, obviously cleaned up the data a little bit and retitled them, but this is just standard data from the Federal Reserve of St. Louis database. Now, um, first I'm going to use the trade data. You can see that they're over here. Over here is the price data. I'm just going to basically take the columns here. Now, I'm not going to go through every single point. Elsewhere, I talk about how to make a time series, make sure that the frequency is right. I'm going to kind of go through it quick, kind of point some things as I go. First, always look at your head. Make sure it starts at the right spot and lines up nicely. Always look at the tail. Make sure that nothing is uh, extra on the end. And that's important because I've got data that are much longer because the other data are monthly, right? So what I have here is a little command. I already fixed that. This is NA omit. I've got rid of all those extra data points, okay? Now, knowing that I've got exports, imports, nominal GDP, or these are all in nominal terms, I'm going to make real terms, and I basically take X over CPI, and then the next one is M over CPI, and then I'm going to plot them, right? I use TS plot, I got no labels, I've got a nice title, and so forth. And this is real exports and real imports for the U.S., starting in 1947 and going all the way to like 2018 or something. All right, now, I had a legend, all right, and I've got real X. You can see imports are higher, and this is some sort of a trade deficit. Now, there's a lot of exports, but there's way more imports, and so that's the U.S. trade deficit. Now, this is in dollars, or constant dollars, adjusted for prices. I'm going to do this again with shares of GDP. And so now I've got, uh, rather than dividing by CPI, I'm dividing by nominal GDP. I make exports and imports share, and then I plot both of these. All right, and again, and so somewhere here you can see that exports and imports are 15% of GDP or, or the like, all right? Another way to look at it is that ratio, the export-import ratio I was talking about, and so I just basically take nominal over, uh, nominal exports over nominal imports, plot the single variable here, I add a horizontal line at one, you can see that this is where it goes from being balanced to being the trade deficit, so uh, the U.S. went into trade deficits after the 80s. All right. Um, now, I, the other way I'm going to look at it is the tr share of the trade balance, the export share minus the import share. So it's X over M divided by GDP. And using algebra, it's X over GDP minus M over GDP. All right. uh, notice that a lot of times you can save computational time and power by, by not, you know, by doing and using variables you have or, or keeping the number of operations at minimum. All right. So make trade balance share. And the other thing I'm going to make is the tr openness exports plus import share. All right, I just happen to plot them together just to save, save a graph, but you can see here that um, I've got my AB line here showing the trade deficit that I had before, right? But now this is in, in shares of, of GDP, right? Rather than as a ratio. Uh, okay, so the US has actually become much more open over time, all right? And as the trade balance has been growing as much. All right, I'm gonna kill that graph. Now I'm going to move on and do the price data that I was talking about. So I make another data uh, set, uh, data frame, data two. Check the head, check the tail. I've got the price of education, and I've got standard CPI. So these are the variables that I'm going to use. And the idea that I'm going to talk about the relationship between educational price levels and every price level. All prices have been rising. CPI has been rising uh, a lot, and you know, a couple percent per year, much longer in the past. These data actually start in 1993, so inflation has been pretty low. But even though all prices have been rising, education has been rising even more. Okay, so that's what a lot of college students face. Right now, one trick that I deal with the data is that the standard CPI has a base year of about 1982 to 1984. So CPI is much higher because inflation started at 100 back then. Education um, started with a base year, I believe, 1993. And it's actually an observation 61. All right, you can see here that they don't line up. I want these to both be 100 at one point in time. So I just do a quick transformation and I, the, the, basically, all you, base, all you do is you find this observation, divide by 162, make it 1, and then times 100, you turn it to 100, but you can apply that to everyone in the column, everything in the data series, and then you wind up renormalizing it to be around 100 here. So the high numbers in the past become lower, all right, because you're turning this later value into 162, all right? So the command for this is basically find the data where it's 100, all right, and then use that number. We know it's 61, but this is the, more, the better way to do it. And then apply it to column two. All right, so to do that, all right, um, then I replace here and I do it for all. All right, and then I just double check. 
Okay, and here they're both equal to 100. Now at this one point in time, they'll equal one, and then you can see where they start to get away from each other. Okay, I'm gonna plot this, all right? And here you see that now they cross at one point, you can see now, education is rising faster than all items and so that's that's the idea that educational inflation is higher than everything else all right. now it's, now we can do it as a price ratio we make a price ratio and plot it again i make a nice little horizontal line where it equals one and, and that's education rising fast again another way of looking at it now i'm going to go back to regular cpi and i'm just going to call it cpi i'm going to make two different inflation rates one is standard percentage change x2 minus x1 over x1 here i'm using differences and lags the other way of doing it is in log changes so i take the log and then the difference in the log all in one command and then i make one little uh you know data frame called inflation you can see that they're correlated all right they're, they're almost perfectly actually perfectly correlated to the precision here okay so the two ways are pretty much identical right um, you could look at it and compare yourself right the other thing i'm going to compare is one versus 12 month rates and so first i make inflation 12 now this is at a 12 month lag so current minus 12 months lag divided by 12 month lag so it's a percentage change where the old or the previous value is 12 months prior all right looking at the head um you can see that it's you know making sure you don't get it backwards these are all positive um, notice the negative sign. If you don't put that on, you'll actually subtract uh, present minus future, and it might be negative. All right. Um, now I can plot it here. I did some stuff with the colors and the thickness. I added a, a header and stuff like that. Um, but you can see here, this is the annual rate. Um, I have a little uh, header here. Um, the And I didn't change the color, unfortunately. Um, but here you can see that you've got a lot of different ways of... Let me do that leave that off because the legend doesn't line up quite right? right this is the annual rate all right i love to think it's much smoother and then i have the uh uh you know thickness showing that it goes through there's a lot more variation in the monthly rate right which has you know obviously month to month a big drop during the financial crisis this is smoother they're not really all that correlated so that you get different results with each but there's no seasonality in here now these data are actually already de-seasonalized right but you see that there's much more month to month fluctuations here okay so that's the idea all right what do we compare we compared uh, uh first of all we talked about logs and exponents a little bit then we talked about how to make some, some different uh, division-based macroeconomic transformations. And this allows you to take real data right, and use them in things that you can use for, for a real you know, macroeconomic project. Right? So we took things as real values. We did shares of GDP. We did ratios of two variables. And then you can say things like, what has happened to the U.S. trade balance? What has happened to the price of education? And so forth. Right? Different ways of transforming variables so that you can get a usable data set to tell something real, something important about the uh, the, uh, the economy, okay? And then uh, we are able to also calculate inflation rates and percentage changes, again, to tell something that's that's useful when you're talking about the macro economy. Um, finally, I, I do this in R, but again, I've got the Excel file up. I don't do graphs, but I do have a little bit of the commands if you want to see that. But the idea is that this is how you would actually transform the variables. This is how you would make... Um, you know, uh, you would actually make things, you know, with, with a, a graph that has two variables in different colors and so forth. So I always put the code in there so you can see how these graphs are made. But right now you can actually compare the gray line, which is the annual inflation rate, with this dashed line, which is the monthly rate. And you can see how the variables that we have calculated look when you plot them.